Ooh, man, it is getting late, guys. What is up? If you haven't noticed already, I got the camera zoomed in quite a bit because we're just having a real short talk tonight. Matter of fact, let me take these headphones off. Um, I've been making tweaks, so in a lot of ways, this is going to be a test video as well because um, in the previous video, you guys saw the, the copycat video. I was tweaking some settings. I noticed there was some stuttering going on, even though the audio was synced and everything. So this should be both a clearer picture than previous uh, streams, as well as um, just better depth of field and things like that. Um, but it should actually not be stuttering anymore, I'm, I'm hoping. So uh, I don't have all the lighting set up right now, but in actual future episodes, we'll definitely have the lighting completely situated. But nonetheless, um, just wanted to kind of freestyle a bit on uh, something I heard today on Instagram. Um, a popular influencer is kind of like a hustler, go-getter kind of guy. He talked about just the quality of a man can be seen by how they handle adversity and um this isn't just a gender bias you know this applies to women as well um when i look at like the trustworthiness of a person the endurance of a person um the self-control of a person the long suffering of a person and i'm trying to estimate where the thermostat is on that individual all i have to do is look in the areas of struggle in their life. What are the things that aren't easy to be comfortable in? What are their goals? And what's their their planning look like? How is their pain tolerance? Do they have the ability to endure through pain or things that they're not good at? Do they have patience or are they just very demanding? Somebody who doesn't have patience probably doesn't conquer a lot of long-term goals um, because to typically the higher up you go in your goal setting, the longer it takes to get to those points because the dreams are so big, they require, you know, it's like, it doesn't take a lot for me to plan how to ride my bike around the corner. But if my next goal is to fly a plane from here to California, okay, that goal might take 10 to 20 years. And now you get to see what I actually desired and how my endurance is um, with enduring through pain and hardship and trial and feeling dumb and things like that. So um, I thought it was just powerful because it's so simple, but um, I know a lot of people and I see a lot of people that, you know, they're seemingly smart. They have skills. They have tons of natural ability. They're kind people you know, they're good human beings by all earthly standards and even some spiritual standards. Um, but when it comes to their dreams, their goal, their long-term goals and things like that, um, that's where you can always see the real story. See, it's different when you're doing something you love to do or something you're good at. Because you don't have to be told to long suffer. You are you enjoy the long suffering of that because you're obsessed with it. You enjoy it. It pleases you to, to rise to the occasion of all the challenge and trial. But what happens when that stops? What happens when you have a goal and you're met with a certain set of things you need to do that you don't want to do? What happens when pain is involved? What happens when your emotions are thrown out of whack? What happens when you're struggling to plan because you're in such a foreign circumstance? The, the, the roughness of the situation might never go away. What do you do in a rough season? What do you do in a rough year? What do you do in a rough couple of years? Um, what do you do in the midst of death? Um, what do you do when you go from having a lot of time to almost no time and now I get to see that the priority life, does, does this person, when they're stripped of all the comfort and everything that they love, the leisure activities that they love to do, do they still prioritize what really matters and can have the self-control to go the distance for a season with no luxuries at all and just hunker down and have a slave to the grind mentality to endure through a season for the sake of might be 
having great leadership in your home, might be maintaining your marriage or your relationship with your spouse. It might be to uh, maintain depth in your friendships with a close few to cut off many. It might have to do with your parenting. It might have to do with just mental health requires you to start cutting stuff out of your life. When, when you are really met with a trial that you have to change the quality of your life and you have to be patient and or you have to acquire a new skill those are the things that really test you you know look in the 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 most painful toughest areas of your life and examine how did i deal with those things and don't pick things that only took a week or maybe even a month to get through i'm talking long suffering that's you know a couple months to years any trial that you that didn't go away for that amount of time, look at how you responded in terms of your time management, your prioritizing, your accountability with others, your acquiring knowledge, your applying of that knowledge, and then you really begin to see, okay, this is the real man or woman that you need to see in the mirror because this is the person, this is the vulnerability of you. When life gets tough, this is the real individual that's going to come forth. And the only reason you're you're not faced with them is because you're drunk off of the comforts of life and the ease of life so much so that you don't even have a proper thermostat of yourself. I see all these gurus online talking about grinding and the hustle and the relentlessness and the lack of sleep. You rarely see someone last 10 years and beyond. With the young groups, you rarely see somebody last five years and beyond. And then after you get out of maybe the top five or 10%, 90% of the people who are talking about grind and hustle and self-discipline and acquiring skills and knowledge and wisdom and positivity and mental and spiritual health, many of the advocates for those areas literally fizzle out and die after year one. Uh, and you get to see that there were other motivating factors for why they got in the space. It might be money, it might be fame, it might be attention, it might be um, praise and admiration from other people. It might be they had some type of selfish desire that they didn't acquire in that time. Um, it might have been ego. It wasn't really, um, they weren't built for the moment. And so it's hard to trust a lot of people in their advice when they can't, they don't have a track record of modeling that. And and I just to wrap up because we're hitting eight minutes here. Um, I've struggled with that as well. Like a couple years back, I had a real like look myself in the mirror, cried my eyes out moment where I just realized, you know, I was, you know, and this isn't in totality, but these are like certain major areas of my life I had actually hidden from the real person that I was acting like in those moments. Meaning I would hide behind other accomplishments and make that seem like I was still going in an upward trajectory when really I was running away from some of my deepest goals and desires and just kind of throwing them in the closet and acting like I was still on the road to success because I was conquering other things that I was already good at and I was improving on other things that I was already good good at and it was just such a hoax. And um, when I met brick wall, brick walls in my journey, there were certain ones that were so painful or so difficult to go through that I ran away. And so a lot of a couple years ago was just having the accountability of saying like, you're here because you're here. And like really accepting, okay, you're not where you want to be with this. Um, okay, are okay? It's black and white. There's really no way around it. You wanted to do it this way. That option is not in question anymore. You've tried it. You can't do it that way. You can't do it another way. You have a solution in front of you. Yeah, it's tough, but you know that it works because you've seen people around you doing it. Are you gonna do it? You know, are you gonna get your spiritual life straight? Are you gonna get your career straight? Are you gonna get your health right? Are you gonna um, cut off certain relationships so that you can make other relationships thrive? Are you gonna be that leader that you wanted to be? Are you gonna, okay, parenting is tough. You know, you got things like vaccinations, uh, vaccination schedule, uh, health, 
health concerns, parenting styles, how your family might see you when you really want to choose to live a certain way, you know, all these like pressing things. How are you going to respond? Are you actually going to be the man that you want to be? Or for fear of others and fear of pain, are you going to assimilate and draw back and kind of let um, the world eat you alive? Even those that claim they love you, um, you just fall to the pressure. Um, I was challenged with that and I still am to this day confronting my, the man in the mirror, so to speak, and trying to rise to the occasion and, and obsess over pain and, and say, you know what? Pain is absolutely necessary because I need to drive out all the negativity in my life. I need to drive out. I need to have a healthy view of myself. I need to not, I need to have self-control. Uh, I need to not be a slave to certain desires and certain comforts and things like that. I need to be sacrificial. Um, there's a lot of things I need to change. Um, so now I'm in the season of life where I'm not only acknowledging that, but I'm also trying to press forward in my weaknesses and live in my weaknesses for a while and really visit them and say, hey, it's time to upgrade to where these other skills are because these are just as important and the only reason they haven't been addressed is because you're you've been too afraid you're not you've you've you have not been rising to the occasion to make the sacrifice needed to upgrade those areas of your life and so i've been trying to conquer those battles um but yeah i hope this video was encouraging for you guys um a lot of these videos are just like my brain kind of you know, pretend like a little door just opened up right here and you get to see inside my crazy brain for an evening. I hope you guys are encouraged. Pray for your week, man. As much as there is to be worried about, about your character and where life's going, God is good. God is amazing. And for some of us, we get a relationship. We get an opportunity to have a relationship with him that is bigger and better than anything I'm talking about right now on this vlog. And so I'm even sitting here thinking now, like despite where I'm at with any of that stuff we just spoke about, God loves me. I need to love being with him more and I need to spend time with him because when I fall short in all these areas of my life and I feel not good enough or I feel like I'm wasting time or whatever, I need to know that the creator of the universe loves me and that I'm enough because of what Christ has done, and I have everything in Christ. If I didn't make one level of progress, you know, God forbid, but if I didn't, if I took my last breath, I have Christ. And uh, I don't want to be a guy that just says that because I know what the Bible says. I want to be a guy that feels that deep in the core of my soul and uh, live that out. And I really believe that. I believe it's true. Now I just need the lifestyle and the heart in the mindset that really believes that. Um, my eyes are getting tired, so I'm going to let you guys go. Love you guys. Have a great night.